Flappy solar ornaments. These things are quite interesting because of their history and what they owe their existence to. The circuitry has changed somewhat. It's been very much mass produced. The first ones of these were little flapping plants. I think they might have even been called flip flap. Um, and they were really expensive because they were sort of designer gadgets at the time. But now they've uh, been mass produced to the point you often find these in pound shops or dollar stores. So let's take a look inside this one and then talk about the circuitry. Let's try that again. Take two, because take one did not go very well at all. I screwed that up so badly by just fluffing everything. So the thing is housed in a plastic housing. It's got an outer trim. There's a common module inside. Most of these just have the same common module that's used for multiple effects, just for ease of manufacturing. And they have this plastic trim, and unfortunately this one, they normally just pushed together, but they'd actually added glue to this one, so it took unreasonable force to get this off. I had to take it through to the kitchen and prized it with various knives and other implements to actually shatter it apart. But once it's apart, it is apart. I'll shove those bits of shattered plastic over there. The base is composed of an upper section and a lower section, and then a couple of trims on top. The trims on top cover the pivots for the uh, rocking mechanisms and lock them in place and one of the other uh, covers covers the solar panel which is a little, I think it's a four cell solar panel although oddly in this one I can't actually see the individual cells but it works well it might just be two, I'm not 100% sure there it's usually four, very hard to tell looking at it, it's just not doing that thing where you look at them they normally reflect a number of lines the unit uh, has the two interconnected flappy wings, the leaves. And if I hold this up like this, one of them has a magnet. You can see the magnet there. Let's zoom down on this. So you can see the magnet there passing above a coil that is just literally glued to the base. It's an air cord coil, just a purely a coil of very, very thin wire. The other flappy wing is just coupled onto it mechanically with a counterbalance. I can show you that by lifting them out. So here's the one with the magnet, and here's the one that just has a plastic counterbalance, and then this little pin here goes into this slot and just makes them go up and down sync. The thing in the middle, the horrible bit in the middle with the flower, is just a plastic counterweight with a small metal screw just screwed into the middle and I think it's just influenced by the fact there's a magnet swing in the vicinity and that basically sets up a rocking motion in this. This is why it's kind of random. I don't know why they added that. I suppose it was just for extra variety. When you pull this apart and the two top parts, uh, it's a top part that holds a solar panel and has this uh, pivot sections, then let's uh, get down close to this. And let's see if I can focus on that coil. I think that probably worked. We have the coil, which I've already broken the wires off because they're extremely thin, plus this tiny little circuit, which has a blob chip on board. It's got the capacitor for storing the charge. What is the value of that capacitor? It's 470 microfarad, 10 volt. And then it's got the little solar panel, and that's all there is, which is interesting because the original circuits were actually fairly sophisticated. And it's where this build sort of uh, owes its pedigree to. It's the original function of these electronic pendulums that is interesting. It's much more interesting. I mean, these are nice ornaments, but where they actually are derived from is very interesting. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look at this coil. Let's take a much closer look at this coil because it's one of the hardest bits to make yourself. It is literally just very fine wire that's been sandwiched between two layers. It's got some sort of adhesive on it and then it's been wound. And then the outer layers have been separated, just leaving the coil on its own that then has been glued into that recess. And it's slightly off center from the magnet for the reason that they actually, it's part of the auto start feature that has to kick it sideways instead of just deflecting it from underneath like the original systems. So let's bring in the notepad and start doodling. So let's tame this image down a little bit. Let's zoom up on the notepad. Let's focus on the notepad and lock off. Excellent. So in the past, <clears throat> you used to get these ornaments 
uh, called Kinetic Art. And they were very simple. They basically had a coil that had a steel core down the middle. And you've probably seen them. Uh, you they can still buy them in, online. You can definitely buy them on eBay from time to time. It's basically it's a base with a little sort of stand. And then you've got like uh, a pivot there and various things like um, three balls or various other items. And one of them has a magnet underneath and it just swings backwards and forwards and sometimes goes right over the top. The circuit for that was based on a coil with a couple of lugs on it um, and a transistor just physically tacked onto that, just basically poked through plastic hole, uh, holes in the plastic and then soldered on. And the circuit for that was super simple. It was often nine volt that it was powered by and there'd be a transistor and I'm gonna draw an NPN transistor in a very odd orientation because it's connected to the positive rail instead of actually pulling down to the negative rail. But that's uh, that's just the way the circuit was done. And there'd be a coil which would be tapped. So that'd be the zero volt rail of the nine volt battery. And there'd be a tap point with a fairly low number of windings switched by the transistor. But then, and this is how they can use this transistor reference to the positive rail instead of negative. There'd be another coil or a continuation of that coil that went back to the base of the transistor. And what would happen is this, when the magnet passed this, it would induce current in the coils, notably in this coil. And when it did that, the base of the transistor would be driven positive with respect to its emitter and it would start turning on. When it did turn on, it would pull this end of the coil positive and that would then induce further current in that coil and that would end would uh, drive the transistor much harder. And you'd end up with a situation that as soon as it was triggered by a passing magnet, it would turn this magnet on fully until it was fully saturated and it couldn't couple more current back and then it would turn back off again. And when it did start turning off, this end would go negative and it shut off decisively. So the net result of that was that as the pendulum swung past it, it would give it a hard kick. However, the one downside to this very simple circuit is that you do have to start the pendulum swing. You actually have to give it a shove to start its swing. And with these solar ornaments, that doesn't happen. So now we have another circuit that was derived from clock pendulums. And ultimately, all these magnetic circuits that kick pendulums were derived from clocks like the original Kundo or Kundo clocks and other types that used early electronics or even electromechanics to make a clock that could be run off batteries. So this circuit is different because it starts off with the solar panel, which I think is normally for panels, but I suppose it doesn't really need to be. And that has a capacitor across it, and the capacitor gradually stores the charge because the solar panel on its own would not be able to actually drive the coil. That then goes across there. There's the coil. There's a transistor which is actually built inside and this, in this instance, it could be NPN, is built inside that little blob that pulls to the zero volt rail, um, which is effectively, this is going to be plus, say, two volts. And that's going to be zero volts. 470 megafarad, 10 volt. The 10 volt is purely because, uh, right, rating is purely because that's probably the lowest they could get in that style of capacitor. It's just an ordinary one. It's not a low ESR capacitor. It's just a very, very ordinary capacitor. So then we have, and this is where it all gets a bit mysterious, but you can find circuit alternative circuits online. Here's the blob, the question mark. What's under that little blob of resin here? And this has uh, the transistor, plus it's also got a sense pin. Effectively, this one only has three connections because the uh, solar panel and the capacitor and the coil are all referenced to one pad here. Uh, the only other two pads are one for the... Um, solar panel and one for the other leg of the coil. And in this instance, it has some clever functions. When the sun comes out in the morning and the solar panel starts producing a bit of current, the voltage across this capacitor starts rising. And once it reaches a specific threshold determined inside this chip, it fires this transistor and that just gives the coil a pulse. And you'll often see that in the morning that these things will just start twitching, but they won't go very far. They'll just rock a bit, but it'll twitch and then it'll sort of rock a bit. 
And once it's gained enough momentum, if there's enough charge there, the other feature this has got, that it will charge up this capacitor, but before it reaches that threshold, if it detects current being induced in this coil by the magnet passing over, it will use that to trigger it instead. And that's when it becomes resonant. And that's the secret of these pendulums drawing so little current. The, it's a resonant circuit that just pulses the magnet only when needed, just very briefly, just each time it passes from a specific position. Very, very interesting circuits. So keywords for this are pendulum circuit. And if you like uh, circuitry and mechanical stuff, this could send you on a long journey on the internet. It's worth mentioning that it'd be nice. I tried lots of experiments with this in the past. It'd be nice if you could just have a loop and a stem and a magnet in the end just swinging freely in all directions. And there are circuits that do that. Uh, there was one called... What was the name of that again? It was Magic Wood or something like that. It was a wooden pendulum. Um, it was a wooden base, a wooden stem that came up, and then a pendulum that had a series of magnets placed around randomly, plus the kicker coil in the middle. And it was one of those... Uh, type of pendulums that it just kicks randomly around all the magnets because it's finding a way through a magnetic field. But every time it passed through the middle, Wildwood, that's what it was called, it would go across that coil and it would give a wee kick and it would just keep it doing that sort of random jiggling about uh, between the magnets sort of thing. It's a very nice unit. I bought one in America a long time ago. I still have it. Uh, but not here, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would show you it. So, I'll put a link, a search link, down in the description down below. This is basically how these pendulums work. And if you look at the history, you'll find that the Kun, Kun, Kundo, Kundo pendulum was a early electric clock that had a big coil, quite stylish, and then a sort of curved magnet that went through that. And it actually actuated this, the escapement mechanism. It, it clicked the second hand forward in the clock as it swung backwards and forwards. But the first ones of those were based on a magnetic, a physical, electrical contact pulsing the coil as it passed on each uh, swing in one particular direction. But laterally, they did incorporate very early transistors, maybe even a, a capacitor to stop sort of it oscillating at a resonant frequency. But if you search in, online for the pendulum circuit schematics, you'll find all sorts of circuits, including uh, the version for the quartz clocks that has the extra transistors and basically shows what was in this blob before they switched to using the blob and hiding the secrets of what's inside, purely for mass production. Very interesting circuit. And, you know, this circuit on its own, this little tiny circuit board, uh, has other uses. You could make your own pendulum system with it. It's very neat. So um, I shall let you explore the internet now that I've introduced you to what's actually behind these little cheapy ornaments that you can get from pound stores or dollar stores for one dollar, one pound. They're so mass produced now. Their heritage is much more interesting than these little products themselves.